And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards. I want you to see that. And not only that he exists, some people stop there, but that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. In the book uh, of Ephesians, in the sixth chapter, and the seventh and eighth verses, the Bible says, serve wholeheartedly. Now, this is said to slaves in, in Bible days, but it could be spoken of in regard to your workplace, in regard to serving your family, in regard to serving your generation, in your generation. Listen to this. Serve wholeheartedly with your whole heart as if you were serving the Lord and not men. So we're getting a key here. We're getting an understanding, a glimpse of how if we will live not as serving men, not as doing this for an earthly reward, but instead that we would be faithful and diligent and honorable and filled with integrity, which is a major part of our witness, that God then will reward. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does. So the first point I want to share with you this morning is that we must embrace a worldview that God is a rewarder. God doesn't just exist. He's not just God up there somewhere. God is watching. God is watching when doors are closed. God is watching the motives of hearts. God does not look past your good deeds. God does not look past the fact that you seek to please him. God is aware of the hearts of our Guatemala team and the fact that they went with a heart to, to be after the things of God in their generation. And there is a reward in that. In Psalms, the 18th chapter, the 20th verse, we find that David is convinced that God has rewarded him because of the cleanness of his hands. In other words, what he's saying with that is that he has a worldview, a mindset, a conviction, and he is wholehearted in his conviction that God will honor him living a holy life. That means that if we will embrace what great men and women of God in Scripture have embraced, we will embrace that worldview that says that God is watching, that God will reward holiness, that God will reward a heart after him, that God will reward us as we pray for Guatemala, and we pray for Uganda, and we pray for Kenya, and other places that we've been able to touch, and China, and South Africa. This church is about missions. We believe as we pray for a world that we're praying God's heart. And so as we tap into God's heart, and we don't just believe that, yes, God has a heart for the world. We go to the world. We step out with every opportunity we have. And Sasan talked about the, the fact that, you know, and in so many words, that our world is not only the world, meaning the globe, but our world is our own families. Our world is our own community. That's why we have stepped on this ground called the Washington, D.C. metro area, and we, with the authority in the name of Jesus, have claimed Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, and Maryland and Virginia, especially right where we have influence here. We have claimed this for the Lord Jesus Christ. My life is to be used wholeheartedly, knowing that God is a rewarder. Now, my reward is that I come to know him better. I come to be more like him. And this worldview was in David. He trusted that God would reward him as he lived with the conviction that God was watching and that God is a rewarder and that he should live holy. In the parable of the talents, and we find it in the 21st, uh, 25th chapter of Matthew, and I won't turn there this morning, but you can read the parable of the talents. The master is going away on a journey. He gives one of the servants five talents, one, two talents, one, one talent. I want you to recognize that the master is the one that is giving them these talents. They don't own them. They're simply on loan to them while the master is gone. We may have talents, and I'm using that word a little different now because a talent in Bible days was a measure of money, but we may have talents today that we believe are ours. And so we look to see when we want to use our talents and when we don't want to use our talents or our abilities or our strength or our finances or, or our love. 
our relationship. We, we look for when we want to do that. But God is looking for us to invest our talents into his kingdom, to invest our love into relationships, to invest our time into his purposes. So one is given five, and one is given two, and one is given one. Now, I wish I could have found this over the last few days because I think I'm remembering it right, but I'll, sell, I, I'll say to you what I think I remember. And that is, if I remember right, a talent is about a year's worth of wages. This is not a small amount of money that is being given to these men. It doesn't belong to them. So the one with the five invests it, and he is able to multiply what the master gives him. The one with two invests it, is able to multiply what the master gives him. The one with one buries it. Now, I want you to recognize that he buries it and gives an explanation for why he buries it. And the explanation that he gives for why he buries it is when he speaks to the master, and the master represents God, is symbolic of God in this, in this parable that's being shared. When he speaks to the master, he says, I knew you were hard, like a hard taskmaster. You were a hard master. And this perception that this one who had one talent, who buried the talent rather than invested and multiply it had, was a perception that his master was not a rewarder, that his master was a hard taskmaster who simply took. 